Hey everybody, this is Dina at Bennington Museum, and this is Museum ABCs. Usually we do Museum ABCs here at the museum, but right now you can't come to us, so we decided to bring Museum ABCs to you. If you've got pipe cleaners or wiki sticks or even just some yarn at home, you're going to want to grab some because today we're going to be talking about lines. So I've got my pipe cleaner right here. And once you've got one or something, another line that you can work with, we're going to start. So just make your line nice and straight. That's pretty easy, right? Can you make a circle out of your line? Oh, mine looks like an oval. Let's make it a circle. There we go. How about a triangle? That one's a little harder, guys. That's the one with three sides, right? And three points. It's going to be really hard if you've got yarn. If you've got yarn, just work on the floor or your table. That's why a pipe cleaner is nice. It holds its shape. So there's a very nice triangle. All right, make your line straight again. Straighten it out. Um, what else can we do? Can you make a wave with your line? There we go. Like a snake almost, or maybe a, a sea serpent, a dragon, or just some waves on the ocean. How about, um, can you make a staircase with your line? You gotta make, straighten out those curvy waves, and turn it into a staircase. Haha, <laughs> that one's fun. Wow, that's pretty cool. Lines are pretty amazing, aren't they? You can make just about anything you want with lines, even something that's just a crazy shape like that. <laughs> Hi everybody, Linda here from Bennington Free Library. I've brought one of my favorite books to share with you today for Museum ABC's All About Lines. It's called Harold and the Purple Crayon by Crockett Johnson. And I'm reading it today with permission from HarperCollins Children's Books. So here we go. Get ready. One evening, after thinking it over for some time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight, and he needed something to walk on. He made a long, straight path so he wouldn't get lost, and he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. There he goes. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path, so he left the path for a shortcut across the field, and, do you see it? The moon went with him. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. It turned out to be an apple tree. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought when they got red. I had an apple today. Did you? So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. It was a terribly frightening dragon. It even frightened Harold. He backed away. His hand holding the purple crayon shook. Suddenly, he realized what was happening. Uh-oh. But by then, Harold was over his head in an ocean. Ooh. What do you think is going to happen? 
He came up thinking fast, and in no time he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. He quickly set sail, and the moon sailed along with him. After he had sailed long enough, Harold made land without mm, not much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. Where do you think he is? The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics, and the thought of picnics made him hungry. So he laid out a nice, simple picnic. Mmm. There was nothing but pie. But there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best. What's your favorite kind of pie? Mine is lemon meringue. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see so much delicious pie go to waste. So Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up. And off he went, looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see. So he decided to make the hill into a mountain. If he went up high enough, he thought he could see the windows of his bedroom. He was tired, and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of a mountain. Look at how high he climbed. But as he looked down over the other side, he slipped, and there wasn't any other side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air. Oh, no. What do you think is going to happen? But luckily, he kept his wits and his purple crayon. He made a balloon, and he grabbed onto it. And he made a basket under the big balloon, uh, big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows, and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. None of the windows was his window. Hmm. He tried to think where his window ought to be. Do you have a window in your room that you like to look out of? He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. Lots of windows. He made lots of buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think where it might be. Hmm. He decided to ask a policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him. That was nice of Harold, don't you think? And he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in his bed. Oh, then suddenly, Harold remembered. Ooh. He remembered where his bedroom window was when there was a moon. And it was always right around the moon. And then Harold made his bed. He got in it, and he drew up the covers. Oh boy, he looks real snug in there. The purple crayon dropped 
on the floor, and Harold dropped off to sleep. The end of Harold and the Purple Crayon. I <clears throat> want to show you my crayons. Here's my stash of crayons. And after I read Harold and the Purple Crayon, I thought, oh my goodness, I wonder if I have a purple crayon, and I do. Here it is. And I have a blue one and a red one and all the colors of the rainbow. So I know what I'm doing on this <clears throat> quiet afternoon at home. I'm going to do some coloring. I'm going to make some lines, just like Harold did with his purple crayon. I want to show you some artwork that uses a lot of really fun lines. This is artwork by an artist whose name is Scott Borofsky and he lives in Brattleboro, Vermont. But for a while, he lived in New York City and he painted on buildings. Maybe you've seen paintings on buildings or on the sides of train cars. He painted on the sides of buildings. So I'm gonna show you some of those paintings. So here we go. These are photographs of some of the paintings that he made in New York City. You can see it's a, a messy, vacant lot where there's no no houses or anything nice. And the side of this building, he made this painting. Look at all of those lines. He even made some triangles in there like we were before. Let's look at a couple more of his building paintings. Can you make that kind of line with your pipe cleaner? It looks like it's got some steps and then a flat part and then it comes back down and curls around. See if you can do that with your pipe cleaner. Here's one more that he did on the side of a building. Whoa. That one also has lots of lines. What kinds of lines can you find there? I see those up and down lines, lots of side to side lines. We've got a circle line for the eye. And look at all those lines that make it look like teeth. What kind of animal do you think that is? Well, when Scott Borowski moved back to Vermont, he kept making artwork with lines, but he started, instead of painting on buildings, he started painting on paper and canvas and things like that, but he kept using lines. See if you can turn your pipe cleaner or your yarn or your wiki sticks into this shape. Maybe start down here at the bottom and make most of a triangle, but at the top of it, make a little loop and come back down. Maybe you'd have to have another piece to make that. What does it look like to you? To me, it kind of looks like a person. Maybe a person standing with their arms out to the sides. Let's look at a couple more. Whoa, this one has a lot of lines, lots of squiggly lines. You'd need a lot of pipe cleaners to make this one, wouldn't you? But as you continue to look at this painting, you might start to see some shapes in it that you can recognize. I see with something that looks kind of like a flower down here, maybe even a flower in a jar. I see lines that look like a face over here. What do you see in this painting? Talk about it together. In this painting, Scott Borofsky used his lines to make some steps just like we were before. They look almost like towers, don't they? Or maybe mountains in the fog. Ooh, and there's some lines that make it look like the moon. What are these lines doing down here? What do they remind you of? These lines remind me of a volcano. How about you? I really love this one. What does this one make you think of? Can you copy those lines with your pipe cleaner? 
Does it remind you of a person? If you look closely, and we don't get too much glare, you might even see the person's heart right in the middle there. Pretty neat what we can do with lines. Lines are pretty great, and we can make all kinds of artwork with them. Hey, Linda, what are some other great books about lines? This is one of my favorites. When a Line Bends, a Shape Begins, and it's by Rhonda Crowley Green, illustrated by James Katzman. And the illustrations are big and bold and full of color. You might... <clears throat> might want to try this one. And if you're into lines, check out this book. It's called Lines Everywhere. And I love it because you open it up and on each page there's a shape and part of the shape has a line that you can see through. There's a hanger. I wonder what's on the next page. Oh my goodness, look at that. There's a sandwich good enough to eat. And, oh, oh my goodness, that line made a chopstick. So you never know where lines are going to show up in a book. This book is called Lines. And it's a little hard to see on camera because there's so much white space and the lines are very thin. But there's an ice skater on the cover and she's making lines with her skates. And she makes lines and lines and lines as she skates around. And oh my gosh, look at those lines on the page. Wow. It's been a long time since I've had my skates on. I had to put them away early this year because it warmed up really quick and then there wasn't any more skating on the pond. So if you like to skate and if you like books about drawing and lines, check this book out. It's called Lines. Of course, my favorite favorite book of all time when we're talking about lines is called The Squiggle because there's straight lines, there are curved lines, there are lines that make shapes, but one of the best ways to see a line is a squiggly line. And this book is called The Squiggle. It's by Carol Lexa Schaefer, illustrated by Pierre Morgan. So the books I'm showing you today are all available at Bennington Free Library. And even though the library is closed right now, when it opens, you can come and check these books out and show me, maybe show me some drawings with lines that you did. I'd love to see what you did. And uh, I hope you're reading books at home and enjoying time with your family. And we'll be together soon. We're looking forward to it. See you soon. Bye. Okay, so now we're going to make some line art inspired by the artwork that we just looked at together. So you need a few materials to get started. You're going to want some construction paper, any color you want. We just chose blue. And it's best if you have something a little sturdy to put the construction paper on. We just used um, the side of a cereal box. If you've got an empty cereal box or a piece of cardboard that you can use, great. If you've got some um, something like mat board at your house, you can use that too. But we didn't have that here at our house, so we're just going to use the cardboard and the construction paper. The other thing you're going to need is some glue. We've just got some school glue right here and some water because you're going to make a mixture of those things and you want your mixture to be three parts glue to one part water so that you have kind of thinner glue. 
You're also going to need some yarn, whatever color you like, and some scissors to cut the yarn with. And I recommend um, that you put down some newspapers or something on your workspace so that you keep it nice and clean. All right, so this is Jack. He's gonna be uh, demonstrating our artwork today. So Jack, why don't you get your workspace ready? Do I need more of these? Get your workspace ready there. Just cover up. I'm gonna use one more. Put one more up there, maybe. All right. And the first thing you're going to do is you're gonna glue, use the glue stick to glue your construction paper to the cardboard. And don't worry that the construction paper is a little bit bigger than the cardboard. We just want it to have a little bit of sturdiness to it. So get some glue all over that cardboard. If you've got a glue stick at home, you can use a glue stick. Otherwise, you can just use some regular glue. Uh, you don't really need to let it dry because we're gonna just we're not gonna not gonna need to pick it up right now. Okay. Um, another thing that you're going to need. To all right, you can add some more glue. Jack's gonna add some more glue while I go get uh, a bowl. All right, you got that on there, good. That's better. All right. Next thing you're gonna want to do is make up your glue mixture. Now, I have mine already made up. It's uh, three parts glue to one part water. You can mix yours up in a bowl and it's just thinned out regular glue. And don't use like a fancy bowl, probably like use a plastic bowl or a paper bowl if you have something like that. That's good advice, Jack. You, you should wanna, use a paper you know. bowl or a plastic bowl or something that's easy to clean out. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is decide what yarn you wanna use and find the end of it and cut a, a good sized length of it off. That? Yeah, sure. Okay. Much? Nope. Get your scissors and cut that yarn. Why can't I do this? There you go. And now, like, I want you to think about the artwork that you saw with all of those lines in it and all of the different shapes made out of the lines. And you're going to dip that yarn into the glue and water mixture. All of it or just the tip? All of it. Dip it all in there. Oh, the other thing you might want to have mm -hmm. handy is uh, like a damp rag or something to wipe your hands yeah. on. You'll find out mm -hmm. why in just a moment. So you're going to take your length of string and you're going to dip it into the glue. Get the whole thing in there. It's okay to get your fingers in there. And then you're going to take it out of there. And that's your line. You're going to use that line to create your artwork by sticking it onto the paper in whatever shape you want. And try to keep in mind some of the shapes that you saw in the paintings that we looked at together. This is difficult. <laughs> it's a little ooey gooey. It's okay, that glue will dry clear. So go ahead and put it down and make whatever shape you're inspired to make. You know, I meant to make a circle, but... That's okay, it's not stuck on there yet, so you can still move it around, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. All right, now you can take another length of glue. You're going to wipe your hands on the rag. Good idea. I mean, you can take another length of string, not a length of glue. Yes. Maybe um, a different color. A different color, sure. Some of this that one, off. I want to make a short triangle. Okay. If you need help cutting, you can always ask a grown up to help yeah. you. Yeah, okay, I need help. Please do it. Oh! Yes, I don't need help. Ah, all right. You're gonna dip that in your glue. So you see, the reason why we wanted to have something stiff on the back, is because the the um, yarn is gonna add some weight to yeah. this paper, and it's good for something to have a, a sort of sturdy back, so that it doesn't get all floppy. So when you're making yours at home, you can use whatever color yarn you have available. Um, you can make whatever shapes you want, make it on whatever colored paper you want, or if you didn't even want to do it on colored paper, you could just do it on the plain cardboard, too. We don't want that. Boom. Wait. I'm going to straighten it out that corner of it. Just like that. Yeah. Nice. Mm. 
boom. Just like that. When you're all done with your artwork, you leave it to dry. And once it's all dry, you'll have your nice piece of line art that you can hang up on your wall at home to remind you of Scott Borofsky and all of the great things you can make with lines. Well, that's it for this Museum ABCs. Thank you so much, everyone, and stay tuned for our next Museum ABCs program, which is going to be all about protecting the planet. See you soon.